we're about to start the show, and you know the drill. If you've been here before and you have something important to share, please add a capital letter Q to your comment. And if you are watching live for the first time, please let us know by writing the word new, and we'll give you a nice little welcome. Enjoy the broadcast. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. Headlines. <laughs> this is our morning get together live here on Facebook. As always, we are sharing news from our city, state, and country. Good news, fun stuff, interesting stuff, um, cultural stuff on occasion. Today we have a little bit of a of a cultural slash. Um, um, what? Well, we have a commentary. Um, uh, an American tourist, you know, she got herself in trouble for saying the wrong things, and we'll get into that. But first, as always, it is a pleasure to see you. Today is Wednesday, Tuesday, 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 March 19th. And there are a few things that I want to share with you. But as always, it is a pleasure to see you all here. Look at all these. Oh, ooh, somebody's making meatloaf. I love it. I hope that you guys got your plumbing fixed up. Anyhow, um, I don't want to get ahead of my own game and take a look at your comments now. We will take a look at your comments in a little while. Let us first jump over to the news to see what's going on out there. And we start with our bus terminal. Of course, we know that we just had a long weekend, and this long weekend was a perfect exercise for Puerto Vallarta's bus terminal to prepare for the upcoming Semana Santa period. Um, according to the terminal manager, Carlos Murguia, as many as 180 bus arrivals were, um, were registered each day of the weekend, moving um, as many as 3,000 daily passengers, primarily arriving from Guadalajara in Mexico City. Of course, these numbers are expected to increase during Semana Santa. In other news, I read similar reports from representatives of the local hotel industry. It was very, very busy this past weekend, and hopefully uh, that serves as a good rehearsal for those involved in catering to the huge number of tourists we can expect to see arriving in our city in a little over a week. The Vallarta Food Bank is set to celebrate its four-year anniversary on March 23rd. The organization's goal has been to nurture hope and stability by offering essential food assistance, health care service, and training programs for vulnerable, po vulnerable populations here in town. You can learn more about the accomplishments of the organization of Vallarta Food Bank in this Banderas News article. And I want to talk a little bit about the organillo or barrel organ. If you spend any time in downtown Guadalajara, Mexico City, or any other large city in the country, sooner or later, your curiosity will be triggered by its sound. It is a mechanical musical instrument consisting of bellows and one or more ranks of pipes housed in a wooden case. These wooden cases are often very ornate. And the instrument is activated by a person turning a crank. Uh, the ones found in Mexico are operated by a well-organized union of pipe organ players and feature traditional Mexican songs. They spend time out on the streets and um, play the instrument for tips. For many of us, the sound of the organillo brings us back to childhood memories. And for many visitors, the sound adds to the charm of city life in Mexico. And what does it sound like? Well, for those of you that have not heard it, here's a short little taste. <laughs> Thank you. 
And of course, as I mentioned before, we'll dive into the specific, the specific reason why we feature this story after the weather break. Uh, as I mentioned, this had to do with a critical public comment from an American immigrant living in Mexico City that got her fired from her job. But first, let's see what snarky weather is up to today. And snarky weather says, I had to deprive an entire city of electricity to generate this nice weather for you. Well, we are grateful for that if that's what it took. Uh, let's see, we have 24 degrees right now, humidity is at 60%, uh, and our weather... Sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. Our weather forecast for today says humid with mostly cloudy skies throughout the day, with a high of 28 and a low of 19. It sounds like a swimming pool day to me if I can arrange it. Tomorrow, it'll be humid with overcast skies with some patches of sun shining through, a high of 28 and a low of 20. And then on Thursday, we can expect humid, a humid day with clear skies throughout the day with a high of 28 and a low of 18. Not bad, not bad. And of course, now you're probably wondering, okay, so what happened in Mexico City? And I'm going to tell you that it went like this. First of all, how do you end the phrase, if you have nothing nice to say? Obviously, one can say, if you'd have nothing nice to say, don't say it. Or you could also say, if you have nothing nice to say, come sit next to me and tell me all about it. But regardless of what path you choose for yourself, this is about... A lovely uh, public comment made by an American immigrant and fashion model by the name of Brianna Clay on her TikTok page. And of course, as you can probably tell, this had to do with barrel organ players. Her comment on TikTok said something along the lines of, Giving these people money is equivalent to giving them permission to contaminate with their noise. This is why I don't do it. It doesn't even sound good. It's the most annoying sound in Mexico, and there are many others. I cannot stand those people that convert that music box into horrible sounds, she added. Well... That didn't go well. <laughs> Needless to say, she was swarmed by negative comments, and rightly so. You know, you live in a place and you're going to criticize it publicly. You are inviting that kind of reaction. Eventually, she had no choice but to make her TikTok feed private with no regrets for her comment, adding that, and I quote, it still sounds awful. And I find it curious that many Mexicans are telling me to go back to my country, a phrase they hate to hear when it's told to them. I find the hypocrisy amusing and pathetic at best. But then things got more interesting. The shit hit the fan when the Mexican modeling agency that employed her uh, made a public statement terminating her contract. And for me... You know, if you ask me this whole recourse of go back to Mexico, go back to where you came from, go back to the United States or whatever the case may be, that's a cheap shot. I mean, to me, the sad underlying reality is that, you know, when we find ourselves in a situation where we're not happy, why remain in that situation? You know, I mean, sometimes we remain in negative situation, ne negative situations as a matter of choice when we could easily choose to avoid them. Um, and maybe I'm just trying to be healthy about this whole thing. I tend to avoid people like her, for example. Would I tell her, go back to your country? Would I get into the whole exercise of throwing shit at her? Probably not. But would I invite her to have coffee with me? Definitely not. 
Um, I know that many of us are guilty of doing public comments of hate or discontent about our situation wherever we are and wherever we came from. I just don't think it's going to lead to anything positive. So maybe, hopefully, maybe that is the lesson to be learned here. As far as her, well, she can sleep on it. And if she changes her mind, go for it. And if not, I wish her luck in finding herself another job. In other news, I want to let you know this was sent to me by a friend this morning. Carlos Navarro will be presenting a lecture on the history of Benito Juarez this Thursday in commemoration of his birthday. This is going to take place at Vallarta Casino at 10 o'clock in the morning. Of course, as I previously announced, we will feature our own take on Benito Juarez, the first uh, indigenous Mexican president we ever had. Um, and we're going to do this at some point before the week is over. Also on Thursday, my much heralded, and I'm sorry for saying this so much, but it is what I do, my music appreciation things. Dueling Versions is turning out to be a very, very fun music appreciation presentation. And it's also going to be on Thursday, but in the afternoon at 5 o'clock at the Joint Boutique Hotel and Cowork. And I am very much looking forward to that. And I also noticed this morning that there's going to be a Fandango Mariachi Festival. Uh, here, the word Fandango essentially only means that there's going to be several mariachi groups playing on the Isla Rio Quale on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., and it's going to be free, so that's going to be a fun thing to, um, to see. And I was also informed that the Emiliano Zapata Art Walk season comes to an end this Friday with over 20 participating galleries that keep their, do their doors open late at night uh, for people to enjoy their offerings. I hope that uh, the organizers had a successful season. And of course, I hope that this event will come back. And of course, tomorrow we have the Spotlight, our new online variety show featuring Puerto Vallarta event organizers. I think we're going to change variety show to talk show just for clarity. For those of you that haven't heard, this is an opportunity for any event organizer to join me remotely as an interviewee so we can learn from the horse's mouth um, what events are coming up and what makes them interesting and special for us to attend or participate in. And that is what we have for today. Let me take a quick look at your comments to see where we're at. Um, good morning. Good morning from Minnesota. And I see good morning from uh, where else? We see a uh, good morning from Toronto. Thank you very much. Uh, we talked about the meatloaf. Yummy. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have. Roger and Todd say good morning. And Den reports plumbing is fixed. Oh, the simple joys of a functional toilet. Well, the simple joys of going to me is a blessing, if I may say so. Although that was probably too much information. Um, what can I say? Uh, uh, da -da -da -da. Larcito! The Organillo creates such a nice atmosphere. Love to see him on the corner by the cathedral in Guadalajara. You know, I always give the Organillo players money. And gladly so. And I love standing next to them and enjoying the music. And, you know, they play with rolls of paper, just like a player piano. And I'm sure that a lot of the rolls get damaged through time and probably get tears and start playing wrong notes and what have you. I still love the sound, just like I love the sound of a tortilla making factory. You know, the constant squeaking and squeaking of the the mechanism. It is it, uh, it's one of those sounds that make me feel like I'm at home. But that's just me. Um, and I see some of your comments. 
about the model. Yes, she got fired by her model agency, Tomala. And, um, and I see comments like this, which, you know, I appreciate and respect. But again, you know, I mean, she hopefully learned a valuable lesson there. Uh, -pa -pa, organillo similar to the organ grinders in the United States minus the monkey on their shoulder. Yes, I would not. I don't think I would want to see the monkey. Do they actually do that? I mean, I've seen, I've seen uh, crank organs in movies, and I I've seen the the monkey. I'm familiar with the visual, but is this actually done uh, in the United States now? I would think that the exercise of having a monkey in captivity to amuse that way might be frowned upon but what do i know i am just curious if it actually happens or if it only happens in the movies um joshua let's um make a video test so that we can make sure that we can uh we can connect when we're supposed to connect and i'm almost giving it away oh fuck it let me give it away joshua is going to be one of our hopefully more than one guests tomorrow in the spotlight he's going to talk to us about his tie-dye shirts and um and it'll be a lot of fun to connect so dude if you want to run a test i should be home this evening or i should be home tomorrow afternoon before the special broadcast begins at four o'clock in the afternoon and uh let's see vicky uh confirms my suspicion that monkey abuse is now the norm uh -dum -bum 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 -bum. albert adds to that i haven't seen them for many years i'm sure it's not allowed now that would make sense and uh this brings us to oh here's a fan renee says yay joshua so there you have it uh josh let's let's make a video test so make sure that you can shine gloriously tomorrow and um and have a good time and this my friends brings us to the end of today's uh, today's broadcast let me make sure that i didn't miss on any comments I think we're good to go. So thank you again for another broadcast. Um, I'm sure there are situations beyond our control that we cannot change anything about. And it is tempting to say something nasty out loud. You know, just, you know, be mindful of your surroundings and let us, let us be careful of what we say. Um, nobody wants to offend anyone as far as I can tell. So that is what we have. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. I'm going to go run a couple of errands and hopefully if all goes well, put my feet inside and the rest of my body into a refreshing swimming pool. I've received an invitation that I'm hoping to be able to honor. And of course, I will see you again tomorrow morning. Have a great day.